In this video, we'll be doing an install or preparing for an install of domain services for Windows. Uh, we'll not actually get into the, the install of domain services for Windows, but actually just talking about the preparation and what is domain services for Windows, first of all, and then what considerations when installing domain services for Windows, uh, and just getting the initial stages of the preparation of, of installing domain services for Windows. So first of all, what is Domain Services for Windows? Really, it, it's a seri several different uh, services coming together to provide AD-style authentication to create a domain inside of eDirectory, your eDirectory tree. And if you're not familiar with eDirectory, it's, it's one of the directories that's been around the longest. It is very robust. It has lots of capabilities. Uh, you can partition it off your tree, uh, make uh, put what are called replicas or or portions of your tree on different servers. So not one server specific server has the entire tree or the entire directory. It's very robust, lots of capabilities, uh, and it's very adaptable. Uh, it's uh, domain services for Windows plays right in with e directory. It, eDirectory will be running in the background, controlling things as far as replication and and your actual directory, your writes, all that are controlled by eDirectory. But DSFW is just the piece, the front piece, that allows for an AD authentication, the creation of a domain and AD authentication. Now, when in Preparing to install domain services for Windows, I highly recommend reading the documentation. Not just willy-nilly throwing it in your tree and, and with no preparation, no understanding of what it is, what it what you want to accomplish, and how domain services for Windows can accomplish that for you. The documentation does a wonderful job of talking about the benefits of it, specifically uh, s some of the benefits here. Clientless logins, no Novell clients. If if you want to just uh, rid yourself of the Novell client, this is the ability to do that. Uh, unified repository of users. All your users can re reside in e directories. Uh, if you have multiple directories, sp specifically e directory and AD, your users can reside on the e directory side and yet access resources in Active Directory. And that gets into our second piece right here, or third piece I should say, the support for cross-domain force trust relationships. Uh, you can create a trust with AD. Again, AD will trust DSFW. DSFW will not trust AD, but uh, there is a, a workaround. Uh, we'll do a video on that later on, on how to make uh, E directory side or DSFW trust AD. Um, it uh, again allows for an application to that that requires Active Directory authentication. That application can uh, reside either authenticate directly against DSFW or against an AD server, and via the trust, users can resource that. Uh, application and really that's probably the best way about doing it uh, unless your vendor supports DSFW uh, that way if you have a problem with your application and they come back and say hey we're, we're not we don't support this directory it's it's, uh, it's not supported well if it's a a uh, inside a active directory then generally you're, you don't uh, have any problems as far as w with support with your vendors so there's support for existing management tools, so iManager, Console One, MMC, whichever one you're familiar with, you can use. I, there are some specific tasks that can only be performed by, say, MMC, like creating a GPO. Uh, but overall, for the management of users, you can use any tool that you want. iManager, the Console One, which technically you shouldn't be using, and then MMC. And then support for open standards, uh, with specifically Kerberos, uh, and then uh, single pass password to log in. So you can log into multiple domains or multiple directories, specifically d uh, d DSFW domain slash e directory, and then AD with just a single user and a single password. 
the documentation gets into the architecture of it. Uh, you can see how it's made up. It's just a bunch of services working together, working with LDAP and NMAS uh, to uh, work with your to work with your uh, your directory. Uh, it's kind of limiting here with our screen, but uh, again, we'll just go through the documentation. You can see some some uh, um, more information on this. Some of the differences that that also uh, uh, occur with it. Now, you got to think about what you, how are you wanting to install, how are you wanting to use DSFW. Uh, most people are wanting to use it for uh, Active Directory authentication. Uh, if that's your case, you just got to think of where are your users that are, are going to be using that application. Are they in a specific location in the tree? Is it in your entire tree? In this case, we have our tree, and we have a uh, Novell. We have an A, B, C, D. I'll keep it e uh, easy. You can see that uh, A is the only con subcontainer that's not partitioned. Uh, B, C, D, and E are partitioned. And then underneath that, there's even more. So in this case, we want all users in the tree. Well, I should say all users in A underneath the O, A, B, and C to be part of the domain. Now, this would not be possible with a single domain prior to SB3. We would have had to do three separate domains because a domain, a partition in your tree. This little sign here is a partition. A partition would equal a domain. With a, that was prior to SB3. Now. SB3 allows the ability to have multiple partitions inside of a domain or part of the domain. So and that's what we're going to do. And we'll go through in a future video and show you how to actually accomplish that. Again, this is the reading through the documentation and, and getting how you're wanting to use DSFW. Now, deployment scenarios. This is the t two types of installs you can do. And the names might sound a little confusing, a non-name mapped and a name mapped install. Just think of a non-name mapped as a brand new tree, and a name mapped is you are mapping your domain name to a container in your e-directory tree. In this case, we're doing a name mapped, because this is an existing tree, and we're mapping to the O equals Novell. This gets into some details on it if you really want to see some great uh, graphics and, and understanding of the, the differences and, and how to set up your tree. F uh, something as far as the once you've gone through the uh, preparation, planning to install, the install piece uh, of the documentation actually is great. It has pictures to go through. You can see step by step on what to do to install. Uh, once you've done that and got an understanding, some another TID to start with is uh, a TID called, well, we'll go back one here, uh, Helpful TIDs on DSFW. And this has a list of TIDs that, w for that are specific to DSFW. It'll help you prepare for, prepare for install, different issues you might see, some questions you might have on domain services for Windows. I would also start with this first TID right here preparing for a DSFW install. Uh, in the next video we'll do, uh, we'll get more into exactly what this this TID says. And this is kind of a shortcut to getting you installed. Some some key things to look at to make sure you have a successful stall, install of DSFW. And we'll uh, do that on our next video. This time we'll end this video and uh, see you on the video too. Thanks.